Today, eight Israel soldiers died in southern Lebanon as it began its ground invasion there. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has promised Iran will pay. The IDF says Israeli special forces have been sneaking across the Lebanese border since November. The U.S. released video showing how it helped Israel shoot down dozens of missiles launched yesterday by Iran. President Biden does not want Israel to strike Iran's nuclear facilities. He spoke by telephone with fellow G7 leaders today. I call the meeting of the G7. All seven of us agree that they have a right to respond, but they should respond in proportion. With Israel continuing its airstrikes into Lebanon, the State Department is now coordinating flights for Americans to leave the country. Let's bring in North Central College Professor William Muck now to give us some more context and share his perspective on everything. Thank you, Professor Muck. Always appreciate you joining us. I want to start with how this current conflict and the tensions going on in the Middle East, how it's impacting what's happening right now with the presidential candidates and what they're saying about foreign policy. Is there a big difference there? Well, a little bit, right? So as we think about uh, the positions of the of the Trump campaign versus the Harris campaign, I think the Trump campaign has been a bit more forcefully pro-Israel, uh, but the Harris campaign also is, right? And I will say this puts the both campaigns in a really difficult position where they want to support Israel, and Israel understands that, right? So in some ways, Israel has a bit of a free hand right now because they know the U.S. political campaign is playing out, and it's unlikely either campaign is going to want to directly criticize Israel. So, you know, Israel is, is paying attention to domestic politics and it's absolutely having an impact on how they're conducting themselves. Now, given your career, you have a different uh, insight into young minds. So I want to ask you, what do you think everything that's going on, this issue will mean for young voters, especially those concerned about human rights and global conflicts when they're deciding who to vote for? It's, it's a really complicated issue, and you see this on college campuses, right? There are real conversations about how to understand the United States' relationship with Israel and then how to think about the Palestinian cause, right? This is, it's deeply dividing campus communities, and in some ways, that's a good thing, right? It's good to have these conversations. Sometimes they're uncomfortable, but it's really thinking about what is in the U.S. strategic interest, what is the moral position for the United States to be on these issues, and, and to realize there's a lot of history. It's complicated. Oftentimes, the perspective depends on where we start the story, what perspective we're telling. So it is, it is I will say, it's heart-wrenching for a lot of college students and young people in general. And again, they will be voting, and so this issue is, is very, very important for many of them. Yeah, I just talked to uh, three college students today, and this was one of their top issues that they that they wanted to discuss but let's talk about how this is impacting alliances between the US and Middle Eastern countries right now is this changing are we seeing a sea change uh, Israel really hunkering down and doing you know going full force and saying we are not letting up how is this impacting um, the, the the way uh, Americans and other countries view the conflict in the Middle East and which side we should be helping it's, it's a complicated picture, right? If we think regionally, uh, Israel has alienated a lot of the powers in, in the Middle East and also globally, right? So Israel doesn't have a tremendous amount of friends internationally other than the United States, right? So, and that puts the United States in a, a difficult position in the Biden administration. How do we balance that? How do we support Israel? And then how, if we disagree with something, how do we express those, those views, right? So it, it, it's, it's really complicated. And we should remember, there were a lot of issues that were being discussed before these attacks all began. So it puts everything else uh, on hold as we start to think about what's playing out in Gaza and Lebanon. So any real long-term peace proposals in the Middle East or states recognizing each other has to be paused until we deal with the conflict at hand. Yeah, Professor William Monk, thanks so much for joining our conversation, a conversation uh, many Americans are having right now as we speak. Thanks again. Thanks for having me. Well,